1420.405 MHz. What's so special about that frequency? Actually nothing. It's about the universe and the atom of hydrogen. As you probably know, hydrogen is the simplest atom and the most abundant in the universe. It powers fusion in the stars and make up two-thirds of the water we need for life on Earth. It also has some interesting property we have learned to take advantage of. One in particular is the spin flip of its lonely electron. All subatomic particles have a spin, which can be thought of as the angular momentum. In the hydrogen atom, the spin of the electron can be aligned or parallel to that of the proton. And since they have opposite charges, this creates a total energy state slightly higher than the ground state, or lowest energy possible. This excess energy can be dissipated by the electron in the form of a photon, with an energy of 5.874 micro electrovolt. And using the Planck equation, we can calculate its frequency, and we arrive at 1420.405 megahertz, or 21 centimeter. This emission is not to be confused with the orbital changes of the electron responsible for the visible spectrum line of hydrogen. In fact, the electron spin is a much less common occurrence with a half-life of a few million years. But with astronomical numbers of atoms, this can be observed everywhere. With that in mind, I wanted to build my uh, own radio telescope and with parts from older satellite receivers, including a six-foot dish, I tried to observe some astronomical phenomenon. With radio astronomy, the good thing is you don't have to wait for nightfall or even a clear sunny sky. The setup is uh, very simple. The dish focuses the radio signal into a feed horn where a single wire collects radio frequencies. I've made this one from a can of Campbell soup. The signal is then fed into a low noise amplifier like this one, followed by a filter to stop DC power that could damage the spectrum analyzer. The classic ICOM R7000 receiving only select the frequency I want to monitor and the intensity is recorded on the chart recording software in my computer. So I first used this uh, older S-band feed horn tuned to receive roughly between 3.7 and 4.2 gigahertz to see if it worked, check for interferences, the size of the radio beam, and the position of the focal point of my antenna. After verifying the frequency range of my detector to be between 3.4 and 4.4 gigahertz, the first thing I noticed is the powerful airport radar reflecting off landing planes. These usually broadcast at a higher frequency than a microwave oven at 2.7 to 2.9 gigahertz. I could even time the signals arrived and verified the rotation speed of about 12 rotation per minute. I later discovered that the Doppler radar from the Weather Channel is more likely to be responsible for this interference. I then let the sun cross over my focal point of my antenna to calculate the beam size to be about 4 degrees at 3 gigahertz, which uh, looks about like this on the sky map. And here is the uh, total radio power of the sun recorded by the antenna. Next, I had to verify my feed horn tuned to 21 centimeter or 1420 megahertz could detect a signal. For that, I simply attached a wire antenna to the output of a signal generator tuned to 1420 megahertz. And here's the signal from the spectrum analyzer. So now let's listen to the antenna at 1420 megahertz in this area of the sky. You may hear static, but this is actually the sound of the universe at 1420 megahertz. The small fluctuations are due to the electronic noise and the antenna temperature, but most of it is from deep space temperature variation in that patch of the sky. Even with a 4 to 5 degree beam size, aligning the dish is not as easy as it seems. Which is why I decided to aim my antenna to the zenith for a foolproof aim and easy troubleshooting. Here is my first recording of the galactic center passing overhead before a power failure cut the recording short. But you can still see the intensity rising as the galactic center approaches. Now here is the recording of the Milky Way radio bump at 3 to 4 gigahertz. I also noticed that some of the spikes are due to meteorites, cell phone interference, Wi-Fi and microwave oven as seen here. So to record a clean signal as possible, I shut down my Wi-Fi, cell phone and microwave and started again. After a very long afternoon and evening, this is what I recorded. The nighttime passage of the Milky Way from my location is in the constellation of the Swan, where a powerful source of radio wave and X-ray is present. There is a black hole swallowing a star in this region. It is possible I've recorded some of it here. 
Also, a lot of these spikes seen here are meteorites and shooting stars. I am still playing around with various antenna like this Yagi I rigged for directional measurement. But this is a great project I barely scratched the surface of. If you like this, you can give it a thumbs up. I always appreciate constructive criticism and feedback, so subscribe for more. Also have a Patreon. Don't forget the bell. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Damn it!